When I was nine years old, I was kidnapped along with my younger sister. We were put in a stranger's car, told to keep our heads down, even allowed to ride without seatbelts, and driven for hours over state lines, all during a blizzard. I was scared and angry, but still I sympathized with the person who'd taken me. It was my mom and a guy named Don with whom she was having an affair. We cruised at a carefully considered speed to stay ahead of the storm and not draw attention from police while they coached me on how to lie about my name if we were stopped. My senses excited, I watched the snowflakes fall and fall over the deserted highway, smothering my true identity, my Indian name, Jamuna, just as it covered the tracks of our tires in three feet of snow. As a kid, I thought my parents were normal. We were well off. My dad's an immigrant from India who became a PhD scientist. He chose to use his skills for evil at Monsanto. <laughs> My mom's a nice white girl from upstate New York who married at the astoundingly young age of 18. He was 30. Apparently, this was fine in the 70s, but hitching up with one person from teenager till death do you part sounds insufferable to me. <laughs> with no time for college, by age 23, she had a newborn and a toddler. Our three-story house in Missouri had rooms that were rarely used, a billiard room and a yard big enough for my aunt's wedding. But my notions of normalcy were displaced when I was nine in fourth grade. I didn't know my dad was controlling. In his Indian family, women were expected to work, cook, clean, and raise kids. His sole job was to work and relax. And as long as my mother maintained her duties, he allowed her to take night classes if she paid for them and gave him any money she made. Though my mom is easygoing and never made waves, women's lib was a thing and she knew what to do. Genetics, <laughs> genetics explains how certain features or diseases are hereditary. In my family, divorce is on both sides. Not just divorce, but wives secretly gathering their kids and fleeing. Starting with my great-grandmother, who took my grandma and escaped her husband in the 1940s when that was totally unheard of. Then my grandma fled two of her husbands this way, including taking my mom from her drunk dad. So my mom was programmed to respond to fear by running. She pulled my little sister and me out of elementary school in the car, I saw four full trash bags, which she claimed we were donating. Of course, I peeked and was appalled to see Rabby, my sister's beloved stuffed bunny, and my rad polka-dotted skirt over pants with matching suspenders. It was the 80s. <laughs> my mom said, out of nowhere, your dad scared me when he bought that gun. Realization hit. <laughs> mom. Dad bought it to hunt rabbits, he told me so. I was ignoring the fact that my dad had never hunted. She said, your dad threatened me. We have to leave for a while. Mom pulled into the bank where she had to walk inside to get cash. I stared straight ahead at the brick wall. And as I processed, we're running away. The red-brown facade began to waver and blur and tears rolled off my chin. Where are we going? When can we see dad? We'll come back for my school play, right? Panic set in. What about my library books due today? And who'll take care of my cat? Because my dad is not the one. <laughs> to cheer me up, my sister galloped Rabby up my cheek. She didn't know what was happening, and I felt guilty for not being brave for her. Mom returned in shock. Your dad closed our account. We have no money. All day, I was hit with new concerns a child should not have to worry about. Our next stop was Don's house. We'd only known him a few months since my mom met him at our local roller rink. It was the 80s. I thought it was cool that he's a skate instructor. <laughs> but I didn't like that he spent more time skating with my mom than my dad ever spent with her. Mom announced that we were riding in Don's car. He's coming with us? No. 
But mom was rushing and said we needed his car in case the police were looking for hers. Now I saw I'd naively trusted Don. He wasn't just a nice guy who taught me how to win the limbo on skates. He'd showered attention, he'd showered me with attention to win me over while stealing my mom. Finally, we arrived in Leavenworth, Kansas, also known as the asshole of the United States. <laughs> its crown jewel was a maximum security prison for military criminals. Our first stop was someplace called Food for Less. Instead of our usual manicotti, scallops, and shrimp, and coke, we got grits, shrimp ramen, and Shasta Cola. The workers didn't even bag the food for us. Next, Don took us to the Esplanade Historic District, a neighborhood on the Missouri River that was once resplendent, but was now marred by poverty. Some houses date back to the Civil War, which the whole town celebrates. Instead of getting a hotel, Don rented us an apartment. I refused to unpack. I was not staying but my mom forced me. She also promised we'd only be there a little while. She'd always been credible, but all of this conflicting information told me this woman is lying. <laughs> now I questioned her motives, and I thought it was cruel that she didn't leave Dad a note. I imagined how he must feel finding the house empty, except for the cat. <laughs> while my mom slept in our room the first night, the three of us sharing a bed, she bitterly complained, we're too restless, we snore, we kick, she's gonna leave. The next night when she slept in Don's room, I saw she had exaggerated her discomfort to justify joining him. I felt gross knowing that, like I had walked in on my parents having sex, only it wasn't my parents. <laughs> we lived in hiding for days, which turned into weeks, then months. All the while, I watched the river's whirl whirlpools from my window, as though they were drowning all semblance of my former life. Before, I had freedom, friends, and money. In Kansas, I was rarely allowed outside because drunks lived in the playground. We found a used needle in our yard, and they feared Dad would find us and kidnap us, or kidnap us back. <laughs> my mom had told him she loved someone else, and in response, he'd placed a rifle in their bedroom closet where she'd see it each morning. She perceived this as a threat to our lives. I realized my dad had lied to me about the gun and revealed a secret side of him. Even after 17 years of reflection, he rationalized that he only wanted to scare her, but not hurt us. <laughs> a few weeks later, we registered for school under fake names. I'd always loved and looked up to teachers, yet I got a wicked one who disliked and disparaged me, a straight A student. Don said she might be racist. It blew me away that someone charged with molding young minds could be prejudiced, could have faults, wasn't automatically someone to trust. One day my sister and I were called to the office. Two uniformed officers were waiting. For the first time, I was scared of police, even as they took us to Taco Bell and plied us with junk food and questioned us while we ate. My dad's private eye had found us, and the police didn't know who to release us to. It was a Friday, and four adults tried to claim us. Mom, Dad, Don, and his sister, who we called our aunt. Yet we were being prepared to go to a foster home for the weekend. My sister didn't understand, so I acted casual. Why do we have to go? I said to the cops, we should just stay with our mom. That's when they told us mom was in jail while they sort this out. My mother, who had never caused trouble before this, had been handcuffed at her work and locked up with real criminals. I knew I should stay with her, but because of ridiculous policies set by clueless bureaucrats, I was being pawned off on strangers. My mom's small town jailer was kind enough to release her in time to rescue us before we were sent to what I pictured as the orphanage from Oliver. Now began the legal battle. My sister and I saw our dad only once. 
I was 11 and the divorce was being finalized. He had given our cat away to the animal abusing boys down the street. For five days, we ate fast food and never bathed. And meanwhile, my best friend, Allison Gordon, spent the school year desperately awaiting my return, which never came. As a memento, she kept my Tron Trapper Keeper with Lisa Frank folders. <laughs> the 80s. <laughs> then mom and Don got married, and I got a hyphenated name in the same vein as women who marry but want to keep their identity. My dad's name plus Don's. It was disorienting and even more shocking. My dad let Don adopt us. I was given another name. Worse, it was an open adoption, but my dad never contacted us. I wondered, if he didn't want me, why didn't he give me up at birth? Why wait until I was 12, old enough to be self-conscious and attached? Mom and Don told me, as a kid, that in my dad's culture, girls are unwanted and even killed, and that my dad would have fought for us if we'd been boys. Good to know, but throughout this ordeal, adults really made me grow up fast. Being suddenly ripped from my dad, my home, my friends, made it hard for me to connect with people. I questioned their motives and have been told more than once that I have walls built up around me that no one can penetrate, which I kind of consider a compliment. Since my life was out of my control and what I wanted wasn't recognized, I finally reclaimed my identity by choosing my own name, the initial J, to cut ties to my dad. And knowing what it's like to feel helpless, I fight for marginalized people and teach kids to think critically. When I asked my mom, why didn't she just get a divorce like a normal person? She said, making a getaway without confrontation is our family's escape method. She admits kidnapping us might have been a bit extreme, but I get it. It was embedded in her. Just as my questioning authority, be it parents, police, or politicians, is now ingrained in me. Thank you. That was Jay, just the letter Carol, everybody.